Finding Common Battlegrounds is an attempt by two brothers, one conservative, the other progressive, to have civil conversations about politics with a little help from their friends. Okay, welcome everybody to another episode of Finding Common Battlegrounds, where we pick a subject and we debate it like sophisticated uh, aristocrats, because uh, instead of like barbaric arguing. Indubitably. (laughs) Today I've got uh, Josh and Ryan Craig and their brothers, and while they do dress alike in red shirts, they're polar opposites in every other way. Uh, Josh is the conservative and Ryan is the liberal and they uh have been having uh stimulating arguments since they were right after they got out of diapers so um this is uh so just we're just going to continue this on into this podcast form uh to, so today uh we're going to be talking about um transgender athletes and should transgender athletes be allowed to compete in sports um, and the format of this is we are trying to get uh, each side is trying to get the other to come up with positions that the other can agree on. So the more they can get the other side to agree on something, they get brownie points for that. So that is uh, that's sort of the format that we're going to do. Um, as an introduction, so I'll just go ahead and introduce and then we'll just jump into the debate side if that works. Uh, you too. Um, I'll just go through my little spiel here uh, from the research that I've done. So uh, historically, sports have been seen as a sort of a male domain, um, but that perception has been challenged with the rise of women's sports. Uh, this has led to the emergence of trans lastly, athletes, uh, many of whom challenge the cor- culturally accepted binary gender norms of male and female, of those uh, kind of challenging those, cult- the, those categories. Um, and so there was a, this is, this is actually interesting. There's some history here. So I think this will, this will be interesting. So there was an early uh, transgender athlete uh, called Renee Richards, which I had never heard of, um, but uh, it was a promising tennis star in the men's circuit. Richards underwent gender reassignment therapy in 1975 and started playing in the women's tournaments a year later. Her discovery and the resulting media frenzy sparked protest after she accepted an invitation to a warm-up tournament for the U.S. Open. The Women's Tennis Association and the United States Tennis Association withdrew their support and 25 of the 32 women withdrew. Um, so he sued, uh, sorry, uh, Renee sued and uh, actually won the lawsuit and joined a subsequent uh, 1977 U.S. Open at the age of 43, lost in the first round, and retired four years later. At the same time, the ruling in Richard's case did not lead to any major outside, uh, uh, major changes outside of tennis. So it's really interesting. I think that's uh, kind of no one. Beca- I think if Richards had won and gone, there might have been like a bigger uproar, but they didn't. And so that really was kind of a non-issue and nothing, nothing's really uh, this, this topic really hasn't come up since then. Now, um, but now it's back in the news. Um, uh, I think that with the acceptance of transgender individuals into society, this has become more in the spotlight. Uh, and some of the biggest news is there's two things that have happened this year. Mississippi Governor Reeves passed Senate Bill 2536, the Mississippi Fairness Act in March of this year. Uh, the law bans transgender athletes from high school and university female teams. It's scheduled to take effect uh, this year. Um, and the other uh, big... Um, Florida has passed a similar law, just FYI. Oh, oh okay. And uh, um, the, the uh, Olympic weightlifter, and I'm sorry, I, I didn't write that down. Laurel oh, Hubbard. Yeah. She's in my notes. Yep. And so uh, she, uh, she'll be competing in, in the Olympics uh, this year. And so that's drew a lot of scrutiny um, and media coverage. So um, I've got a bunch of other stuff here and um, that I'm sure I'll probably just pull out as, as the conversation uh, goes on, but uh, let's start. We'll start with, we'll just jump into it. First question. Um, Ryan, will go with one of your questions. We'll throw it out and just start a discussion on this. So uh, all right, Josh, this is Ryan's question. If we allow transgen, excuse me, if we allow trans women to compete with cis women for the next five years and trans women come to dominate all sports, I would agree to reconsider this issue. But if trans women are primarily losing to cis women, can we agree that this is a complete non-issue? 
which kind of goes to the point I was just, I just brought up with the, with the Renee the Richards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So a little bit of background uh, and I'm starting with a <clears throat> rhetorical question, right? Are trans women winning all the things? Are they winning all the trophies, all the championships, all the competitions, all the gold medals, et cetera. The Olympics have had trans inclusive policies since 2004. Since then, almost 17 years, not a single trans woman has even qualified for the Olympics. The 2021 Olympics may be the first to have a trans woman qualify. Uh, as Tom mentioned, a woman from New Zealand, Laurel Hubbard, who will be competing in weightlifting. And just as a kind of an aside and an FYI, she is currently ranked sixth in the world, not number one. Canada has allowed trans women to compete in college athletics since 2013, and trans women have not come to dominate women's sports in Canada. Thus leading to my initial point of agreement, which is kind of just an experiment. Can we agree to an experiment? If we allow trans women to compete with cis women, and cis women is just kind of traditionally gendered individuals, right? Uh, For the next five years, and trans women come to dominate all the sports, I would absolutely agree to reconsider this issue. That would not be a level playing field. That's totally fair. But if five years from now, trans women are one, they're a tiny, tiny sliver of the population, right? We're talking about like less than 1% of the population. Uh, But if trans women are primarily losing to cis women in all these sports, could we agree at that point that this is a complete non-issue and like, why are we getting all up in a huff about it? No. Um, No. Like you said, they're a small percentage. And, and what you generally see is, I mean, we don't see LeBron James transitioning and taking over the WNBA, right? You see kind of sub-tier athletes that are the ones that are transitioning. And they may not be able to compete with the cream of the crop of the women, but some of them are. Some of them are breaking records. Um, so you're right. There is an experiment. Um, I, I mean, I agree with me. No, I mean you set it up so so I have to kind of agree with you uh, because it's such a stupid hypothetical, and it is. If if I mean obviously if trans women started taking over every sport, obviously that's an issue. But your what your argument is because they're not dominating, eh, it's not an issue. This has only been going on uh, at an even moderate scale. Obviously, it's still not a large scale, but it's only been going on for a year or two. And it's already starting to become an issue. So trans trans women competing? Uh, I just at a, mentioned at a mo- at a moderate scale. They yeah, haven't even have- qualified for the Olympics for seventeen years, and they've been eligible to do so. They've been competing in Canada for seven years, it doesn't, and it doesn't matter. they haven't won anything. All right. Though, um, both of them, we've got we've got natural experiments establishing that like this just isn't happening. It's it's, and I'll get to this in my Hubbard in my big immediately the broke. End. I think it was Hubbard immediately started breaking women's records in the weightlifting. So we're, maybe it wasn't yeah. Hubbard, somebody else. But Ryan, Ryan, what you're asking is like, is this really an issue? Is this is this really only an issue if they blow everybody out? Right? Yeah, like, I mean, if I, if we have I don't know thousands of these athletes, right? Trans women, because no one cares about trans men, right? right? Women who transition to men, like that's a non-issue. No one even cares about that. Well, but, and. And I think it's worth setting that the whole the whole reason we created women's categories is because women can play in the NBA. They just they they can't. It's it's too difficult for them to qualify. Right. And so they end up creating a whole different category for them to be able to. Otherwise, they're, you know, oh, we're fair. Every, anyone can play in the NBA. It's this, it's the same with like uh, women soldiers. Right. There's a there's a fitness uh, criteria that has to be met. And it's very hard for women to hit that fitness criteria. And so they're not women. Soldiers can, women can be soldiers, but it's just very hard to, right. And so you have, yeah. I think there's only one that's, uh, that is actually qualified and, and met the, the, the oh, for special primary. forces, you mean, but to, to support your thing, this Renee Richards won the, or bombed out in this tournament, in this tennis tournament. And everyone's like, all right, well, that's a non-issue. If she'd won, everyone would have been like, Whoa. Oh yeah, it would. I think it would have been very different. Um, one of the uh, things that started you, the case, let me give you what? an example. Okay. Of why I disagree. A couple of years ago, five, six years ago, maybe a couple more, there's a, a fighter, an MMA fighter named Fallon Fox. Have you heard of this person? Uh, I used to follow it more closely. I don't Fallon know. Fallon Fox, Fox, 30 years, was a man, transitioned, okay. became a woman, entered an MMA competition, didn't tell anybody that uh, he had transitioned. And he fought two women. And he beat the crap out of them. He fractured one of their skulls. He, he broke her orbital bone in like seven places. And afterwards, this lady uh, said, 
I had no idea I was fighting somebody who used to be a man and I had no problem with the transition, but I would have liked to know. And she was so strong. She overpowered me completely. She absolutely destroyed me. And, and it was like I was fighting a man. Turns out I was fighting a man. Okay. She's, she broke her skull. That's a problem. Um, and, and I'll get into why this is so problematic in a minute, but is that, is that you really okay with that? People that, uh, I mean, whether or not you agree they have an advantage, I, they do have an advantage. It's quite clear. She broke somebody's skull, and this is not exactly empirical <laughs> evidence, but, uh, and since Fallon Fox has lost to Ashley Evans-Smith, because Ashley Evans-Smith is an elite fighter. She's fantastic. She fights in the UFC, and she beat the crap out of Fallon Fox because she was, over, she was able to overcome the strength difference with her skill. She was still not as strong as Fallon Fox, but she was she had better skill. Um, that's my problem with it. There is a difference uh, until surgery catches up where you can completely change a woman into a man or vice versa, and there is no difference. There is an advantage. Men have an advantage. Plain and simple. Uh, let me. Mm, I want to so, complicate that a whole bunch because that's that's an oversimplification in a lot of ways. I want to, and I want to clarify one statement here, and because because um, I did do research on this, uh, the Olympic history for the criteria. So it was in two thousand four that it was the first time that transgenders were allowed to participate in the in Olympics, um, but the criteria was very strict. Uh, they had to do three things. It was must have undergone the sex reassignment surgery, including changes to the external genitalia and gonadectomy. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, second, they had to show legal recognition of their, of their gender and they must have undergone hormone therapy for an appropriate time before participation, yep. which they suggested two years. Mm -hmm. so it, was, it wasn't until 2015, it dramatically changed in that they must just declare their gender and they don't have to have made it and not change that assertion for four years. And I'm not sure if that's retroactive or if that's just like, I could do it today and then four years after the Olympics. Right. But, and then they must demonstrate a testosterone level of less than 10 nano, nanomoles per liter, um, mm -hmm. which is, and I, and I had to look this up, but that's, that's pretty high. Like that's pretty yep. high for a woman. And so, um, uh, and so, it, so they were actually, anyone could have competed in the 2016 Olympics. Nobody did. And so it's not until these Olympics. Uh, that we have uh, our first. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway. Jumping back, if I can just really quickly to Josh's points. So, Two things that I want to just very quickly, and then we can move on to something else. One, um, there are men who fracture other men's skulls, including orbital bones, in MMA all the time, right? No, it, it's fairly rare, but it does. Oh, it happens all the time. I used to watch it all the time. It right? doesn't People happen all the time. Fractured skulls are very rare. Okay. I watch MMA but, all the time. But, but it happens. Yeah. It happens. But it happens, right? And men do that to men. Yes. Women do that to women. So this very, is very, very rare. But uh, this is an instance of a a trans woman doing it to another woman. Yes. And that, that was your concern. The, the second point that I would make here is um, Fallon Fox. So I know nothing about Fallon Fox, right? But let's say that Fallon Fox transitioned, right, from whatever their name was before to, to a woman um, later in life which means the advantage that Fallon Fox has in that particular case is that they went all the way through puberty and into early adulthood with the hormones and all of the, the kind of benefits, if you will, that make men on average slightly more you know, stronger, et cetera. It's not all slightly. The way up until it, uh, it's about a 10% difference. I actually looked it's, this up. It's more like 30% for, for certain characteristics. And, uh, well, we can discuss that later. I actually okay. looked up a, an empirical article that, that talked about the differences. Anyway, um, imagine that uh, we'll just make up a name, right? Uh, Sally Stevens realizes at five that you know she's born biologically male. She transitions at five and goes on hormone therapy at 11 and never gets that muscle benefit of going through puberty uh, in a masculine way. Why can't she compete in MMA? Um, she, she doesn't have any of the benefits that Fallon Fox had of, of gaining all that muscle mass, right. That comes from being male and not being on hormone treatments. So I, I, Sally, I suppose Stevens, if you want to make that, uh, that cutoff, okay, that's a different argument, but, but, but that's, that's but literally the argument people are making today. 
No, because you're making it a blanket statement that anybody that transitioned at any time in their life, that's cool. Because Fallon Fox, let's let's be clear about the advantages. Okay, men have denser bones. We have denser bone mass. We have bigger hands. We have bigger muscle mass. It's a big advantage. And none of that goes away when you transition. She still has denser bones. She still has bigger hands. Okay, you can. If you uh, transition at 30. Yeah. Right. Anytime if you transition puberty. at five, pre-puberty, m- maybe right. not. But See, that's a but whole other blank- issue. Right. That I'm but the get bands. To my first point. But the bands on trans women and uh, athletes, they are not nuanced and saying, "Oh, if you transition early, then you're fine." But if and you transition, Kevin, later, they're not. not. Because why are and we? Why are we letting kids transition early? That'll get into my first point on how diluted okay. this is. Well, let's get back to that. But that, right. this but is the point you're trying to make, is. Ryan. Is it's it's a it's it's a performance thing, not necessarily a gender thing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, we're gonna move forward. I did not get di- agreement on that. Sorry. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> We've got a buzzer oh, today. I like it. <laughs> uh, uh, we're going to move on to our next question here. This is uh, for Ryan from Josh. Ryan, can we agree that the words I identify as are not a magical D&D spell that miraculously transforms the speaker into whatever idiot object it is that they identify as? Josh, you want to expound on that? Well, I worded that kind of harshly, but... <laughs> We can experiment, right? Let's try it. I identify as an F-16. Oh, look, I can fly. My butthole just turned into a scramjet. <laughs> it doesn't work, right? We can agree well, that, that just saying I identify as doesn't actually make any kind of change. Are you making points that like, because there are stories of people identifying as different ethnic groups that aren't, right? There was a big hubbub about a girl who identified as black and she was- Rachel Dolezal. Black. Yeah, she she was white. She like went to a tanning bed and dyed her hair black and said, I'm black. Right. Okay. Sure you are. <laughs> this is- Well- This is that, delusional. That, that, and let's watch the video and then we'll discuss this because it is that's just what it is and i'm going to call a spade a spade so i don't my video video. (laughs) i don't think it's delusional for a variety of reasons but watch this video and then you're gonna if you don't disagree you're insane uh race and gender are largely social constructs so okay uh i will go ahead and try and oh trust me they are but um let me share the screen. I will probably cut this back in and post uh, just because these never work. But uh, and let me make sure my audio is coming through so we can all see this. This looks like a really weird video, Josh. I don't oh, know what to bizarre. expect here. Oh, I all know right. what this is. I've seen I have not seen it. Oh, I have put it over here. So what we're seeing... The baby no, has been after. able to latch, but I've not been able to produce any milk. It's okay because we're gonna supplement the feeding with formula so that my baby's still getting the, the nutrients that they need, but I'm still feeling hopeful. I appreciate you so much for all your work. And I appreciate you also, baby. I'm gonna die without you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So of those that didn't watch the video and those that did watch the video and can't fathom what is actually going on here, what you're seeing is is two trans people. The one with the beard was biologically female, and she gave birth to that baby. The one trying to breastfeed the baby is biologically a male trying to breastfeed the baby. Can I say that again? The one trying to breastfeed the baby is biologically a male. Ryan, with your understanding of biology, mm-hmm. what are the chances that he's just going to suddenly start lactating. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to get so much crap for this, right? Uh, real quick, um, you just misgendered this individual, right? If they identify as a, a woman, then let's just kind of go with their gender. Is that okay? Can we do that? Sure, but that's okay, not the thank issue. You. Right, right. I, I'm, that's why I'm saying... Because this I'm is confusing. This is really confusing. This is confusing. You All have right, the biological... So to your point, so to your point, this person was biologically male and has transitioned. So this is a woman now, right? Because we're okay. accepting their gender identity. Uh, here's the interesting thing. Um, Just answer I, the question. Then I, you can I, I'm in. going to. I, I am going to answer the question. We have nipples. I can take my shirt yes, off do. and show you. We have nipples. Yes, we right? do. Men can produce milk. 
It's possible okay, to do that. Go. Here we go. <laughs> it, it's totally possible. And I, I okay, I, I'm not going to out anybody, but somebody I know, I'm, you told the, me the story. two of you know, right? Yes. Um, did due to some biological hanky panky, right? Something weird happened in high school. They started producing biologically male, gender male, always identified as male, still identify as male. They were producing milk. It was is it actual possible. milk. It was milk. Did you they, test it? They had. Uh, I wasn't it? there. No, I was not sucking on his. I milk. wasn't yeah. there. <laughs> Something was coming out. <laughs> Something white and milky was coming out of okay. his. Okay. Maybe Ryan, it was you weren't you were sucking on it like you'd be able to know <laughs> if it was. Oh yeah, that's breast milk. I taste that. Definitely breast thing. milk. All right, guys. Hey, answer uh, the question um, on a zero to one hundred percent chance. What is the chance given- that this this biological male who's now a female? Okay. That didn't give birth to the baby, so right. nothing was triggered. What are Which the chances? Be challenging, yeah. What are the chances that she is actually going to produce any milk without hormonal intervention? They, and, and there was, I think, some. I don't know. Okay, because if I we give them prolactin, give and I think it's something else, right? So prolactin, pro milk, is literally what that stands for, right? It's a hormone. Without but prolactin can ducks, actually without mammary glands. Yep, totally possible. It is possible. I'm saying without that intervention, the odds are basically zero. Yeah. With With medical intervention. Yeah. With medical intervention, uh, this woman could, in fact, potentially breastfeed that child. Uh, I'm not saying it would be easy. I don't know of any documented cases where that's clearly being done. But with medical intervention, is you're it doing theoretically possible? Here. Yes. You're doing backflips over no, I'm, here. I'm, d- I'm agreeing with you. Lunacy. I'm agreeing with you, but I'm saying it, it actually, in theory, it is totally possible. Right. And, and, but your question, Josh, is getting to the argument of like, when I say I identify as, what is the strength of that? Right. What's the strength of that argument? How, how much, how far does that go? Right. What, well, how does, does it hold up? Cause apparently, I mean, we are now, we had, now have Olympics that are honoring when I say that statement, they're saying, okay, we will take you on that, that you, you're now a female or, or whatnot. So here's wh- my problem with our whole discussion. This is why I was, this is the only discussion I've had that I'm trepidatious to come into. Ryan's been worried about a couple, but this is self delusion. Okay. This, this woman who is biologically male is trying to breastfeed a baby. And, and 10 years ago, we would have said, this is, child abuse the child is hungry and she i don't know if it's a male or female child i don't want to misgender the child um okay. the child uh, is hungry and she's sucking on a man's nipple essentially okay and i'm not i'm not trying to misgender this person this is child abuse we would have called it that 10 years ago but now in our current climate the far left is stating that if i don't embrace this if i if i can't say this is beautiful inclusivity i'm a bigot I'm sorry. I'm kind of worried about this child because what are they doing? This is child abuse. The child's hungry. Give it a bottle or something. Don't latch it onto a man's nipple and just hope for the best. This is delusion. Okay. I can deal with ignorance. I can deal with somebody being wrong. I'm wrong all the time. This is delusion. And, and I'm expected to accept this. Okay, I can't, so I can't. I, I, I get you. this. Well, you understand what I'm saying? I totally understand what you're saying. Right. And I'm actually agreeing at some level with what you're saying. So uh, I actually got into debates, and this is part of how I had a falling out with a colleague over this very issue. I can grasp that gender, right, how we manifest who we are is a social construct. I can grasp that. That that to me is largely fine. I would even grant that. Sex, biological sex, the parts that you have are not really a social construct thank okay. you where where you, where you can get some variation is in like penis size and clitoris size uh that can get a little wonky, intersex is a right? thing it's totally a thing so it can yeah. get a little wonky there but if you don't have a uterus you're not gonna give birth to a baby and this is where i actually had a falling out with a colleague who was like how dare you say that biological <laughs> sex is not socially constructed and i was like how dare you like pretend that you can have a baby if you don't have a freaking uterus. Hey, and, and it was an absurd argument, right? So and that's my problem. I, I with get it. your point. It's delusional. I get your point. At a certain level, some of this is clearly moving into the realm of delusion. I'm not going to disagree with you on that. 
Um, if, high, if virtual high five because you're, <laughs> right. you're fair All right. about Let that. me try this out here. No. Oh. Uh, no. Oh, no. Hang on. <laughs> what? It was, supposed, we had it was supposed to be a ding. Uh, I ding, haven't ding, tested ding. these out. <laughs> right. ding, ding. Clearly, give me a ding. That yeah. one was tough. Yeah. I didn't know if Ryan would agree with that one. Well, I mean, that it, one's bizarre. It but... might be a little further. I don't know that I would call it child abuse if the baby's not starving to death, right? If they just wanted the baby to latch on and then they're clearly feeding the baby's healthy, I don't think that's a problem. I mean, you can let it suck on your finger. Like, we've all done that with well, babies. The, not the a big is, deal. There's a Family Guy episode where Peter goes through this delusion thing and then he tries to breastfeed Stewie. <laughs> And it's scarred me for a long time. So I would call it child abuse, but uh, it's it, I digress. It Tom, right. abuse, if, we're going to move yeah. on to the next question. Okay. Uh, uh, Josh is for you. This is Ryan's question. Can we agree that the greatest likelihood of harm in this issue is not allowing trans, uh, sorry, trans women to compete rather th than uh, cis women occasionally losing a competition to a trans woman? Okay. So, and this so, is sort of this is along your same original question, right? Ryan? Yeah. So my my initial major point, right, is that it's not like trans women are dominating tennis and volleyball and all of these uh, you know women's sports at the NCAA level, college level, high school level, anything. Moving that to a slightly different argument, there are a lot of ways to think about ethics. One of them is based on principles, right? So we can have other ways, but one of one of them is principles like autonomy and justice and beneficence, so doing good, and non-maleficence, right? So not doing harm. Who is harmed when trans women play competitive sports? The assumption is that cis women are harmed because it creates an unfair competitive environment. And where is that? Where is the evidence that that is happening? Of course, see my first point. There's virtually no evidence of this. Josh, true. you gave a really interesting point in the MMA one. I hadn't heard that. That's the only one where I've, I've seen like actual physical violence being done on a, on a woman by a trans woman, right? Okay, got it. So there may be some exceptions, but we'll get to that. We do know that trans women are already marginalized and commit suicide and are murdered at higher rates than our cisgender individuals entirely. Most of that is based on their marginalization. If we marginalize them further, do we think that will benefit them or harm them? Can we agree? So that's my question. Can we agree that the greatest likelihood of actual harm, physical harm in this issue is not allowing trans women to compete rather than cis women occasionally losing a competition to a trans woman? There's you see my point? Question. I see your point, but I mean, the key there is physical harm. Well, yeah, they're, of course, they're more likely to kill themselves because they're already more likely to kill themselves and, and, and be killed. I would like to see assaulted. the data. I would like to see the data that says that because they're marginalized, because I, I haven't seen that. They are a much higher at risk group, no doubt yeah. about it. But if we don't know that it's be, I, the data I've seen is not because they're marginalized. There's we why used they're to, killing themselves. We used to call uh, the, the health, medical health profession used to, um, uh, gender dysphoria used to be a condition, and now it's not right. politically correct to call it a, a condition, something that need, they need help for. Um, Being gay used to be a condition, Josh. Okay, that that's fine. Hold whole different <laughs> argument. Uh, not really. I mean, we've changed things, right? So, like, but we felt, but we felt over time. Well, okay, let, let's let's go there then. Gay people are are still even our in our more accepting society are still more likely to kill themselves. They're they're still sure. way higher risk, and and it's not necessarily. I mean, it might be. We don't have good data on it because nobody wants to study it because they don't want to get canceled. We don't know if it's because they're marginalized. We suspect well, we totally maybe it do. is. No, we no, don't. There are tons because of people they, studying this. They still kill themselves at higher rates in San Francisco or in the the, the uh, Norwegian countries where it's totally cool to be gay. So there are people studying it, but I haven't seen the data that says it's fully because they're marginalized. They're at higher risk. Well, no, Probably it's in not going to be a single causal thing. Certainly okay. in Utah they are, but it's okay. not going to be a single cause, but there are all right, all sorts so this of is complicated. And you're sure, just throwing that's the, fine. the baby out with the bathwater on that question, and I forgot what your actual question was. Well, my, my uh, actual well, question. Well, who's, who's it? Okay. so uh, Who's so, being harmed? Who's being well, harmed me, if we marginalize trans women? Physical okay. harm? Sure, trans women. But there are other ways to harm people. Okay. Yeah. Some of these uh, cis women might be working towards a scholarship. And if they win one track race or lose one track race, they're done. 
okay, that harms them when they're competing against somebody that may or may not have, but probably has a biological advantage. There are other forms of harm that we need to be aware of. Uh, so just to say, well, physical harm, they're more likely to kill themselves. Okay, that's a that's a loaded question, and I don't like the question. If we got if we're going to stick verbatim to your question, sure, I agree. But if we're actually going to look at the broad picture, no, it's not uh, trans women that are most likely to suffer from their inclusion in, in cis women's sports. It's cis women are, are going to lose, uh, and, and, and who knows what the ramifications are. But let's Josh, uh, To yeah. the heart of Ryan's question, though, is because I think a good point to this is no one's complaining about this in men's sports, right? If a, if a woman wants to transition over, no one cares. They'll go for it, right? And, I'll, uh, I'll get to that. That's They'll probably important. get creamed, but um, and so I, because I, I I think Ryan has a good point in that it's it's about it is about taking it's a taking away from women, right? It's taking away wins from women now, and that's I think that's the heart of the matter. And it, how big a deal is that? Because because uh, Josh, you're right. It's going to take scholarships from women, and it's yep. going to take their their winning. It's, ta- it's already taken the Olympic spots from women, right? And, that's and a it, big deal. The question is like, One. as an accepting society, can go, go we... tell that to the people that that lost their spots? If that's not a big deal, right? And, um, and I, I get your point. <laughs> we should be we should be concerned about them, but you know, it, 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 are we helping them by society, just saying, is yeah, this, this is responsibility? Right, that would be the question. Is like to be accepting, they got to move over and let trans people have a spot. I, 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 my, a, big part of my problem with that is how long have women been fighting for equal rights and this is the left's cause right we're the feminists and then women finally achieve equality in sports and they have you know their own leagues mm-hmm. and all of a sudden we're going yeah let's throw some some well trans women some used to be men over there and take over their leagues i mean well, let's not say that there's a term for that equality they have certainly not achieved equality oh, in terms terrible. of pay uh, come on that's you have to admit that that's a fallacy pay yes are it you correct? Insane? They have not received equality, but it's uh, no. But that's a fallacy. If women's you, soccer like, team, U.S. Well, national teams. Yeah, but they, they don't bring any, fighting for that right they, now. They and they lost WNBA the case because they don't. NBA. They don't bring in as much money. And if you take the 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 broad spectrum, if you factor in um, dangerous uh, jobs um, and willingness to work extra hours, uh, it's within the margin of error. But women actually make more than men for doing the same job. Okay. If you factor in those two things, women make more than men. But the left refuses to look at that number. Oh and they gosh. just say men make more than women. Yes, men do make more than women because they work all the dangerous jobs. They're willing to relocate for work. They work more hours. It's really easy to see the numbers no, there. Not, so don't Josh. give me this bull crap on pay. <laughs> so Josh, I can totally give you the bull crap do you, on pay. Do you agree with him on this, that, that this is about winning and taking away from women rather than just a gender issue? Uh, yeah, I forget the question, but that is my, that is my concern. We're we're taking away from cis women, and and but, this one is tough. We should be really concerned. The, qu- the question is like that the that the harm is that we're taking away wins from women, cis women, rather than <sighs> no, rather than being a gender issue. It's that we're taking away, w- w- you know. Uh, yeah, I, I agree yeah. with that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm understanding yeah. correctly. I agree. With but that. but can I just jump in here and point out a little bit of hypocrisy? Aren't both of you kind of tough love parents that are like, it's good for people to lose? Uh, yeah, Doesn't it make you stronger? I am, yes. And now you're over here whining and bitching like, oh, it's terrible if these cis women lose. Come on. No. Own your um, hypocrisy here. Own there's it. no hypocrisy. because Absolutely, Josh. My daughter, on. my daughter on her softball team, she's a good little athlete. I know she is. She's I have great. no problem with her losing in Excellent. a fair game. Absolutely. If she was out there playing some some twenty five year old men, I'd have a problem with that because sure, but she's not. she can't compete she'd with playing, that. She'd be playing against some kid who transitioned at how old? How she's she can't be more than eleven. She's if 11. she was playing against a kid right now, right? That a kid, kid right now that's different. Three or four years ago, she would clobber that kid. She's okay, great. That, that's fine. Not and, not and what I have an thing. issue with. Would you celebrate even more if you knew that she beat a trans woman? No. Oh come on, come on! Well, that's that that right there's a little bigoted. <laughs> no, we, not at all. Why, why would I celebrate if more? She, okay, if, if, Addie, Addie, if Addie beat a boys team, would you celebrate? Right. Yes, more? if she beat a right. boys team because they have a clear advantage. Even at this age, they have a clear advantage. And so, if she beat somebody that you're like, I think that was a boy that you beat. 
Absolutely. And why would I celebrate? Because it's a tougher accomplishment. Okay. The, this is not, I mean, I don't know how this is up for debate that it would be a tough accomplishment. I can give you countless examples. That you're, you're making my point for yeah. me. I'm, no, I'm I think, literally, I think you're you, making my point for me. I'm saying I agree with, I agree what's with you, wrong with women losing. Women can lose. It as long stronger. as it's, as long as it's so, a fair competition, nothing. Okay. As long as it's fair, but, and so, but so whether or not it's fair Renee is Richards. the issue. That's go, the go issue. Go back to Renee Richards. She, it doesn't prove she anything. tried to she tried to compete with the women and she got her doesn't butt prove handed anything. to her. All right. Yeah, so gonna give this if you one. take a mediocre male athlete and put him against the best female in the world, he's gonna lose. So what you're saying right. doesn't prove anything. It yeah. absolutely does, because that's no, exactly what we're talking about with right. trans I'll, women. I'll disprove what you just said with my I'm giving argument. Ryan right. this one because I think <laughs> not, Josh, you agree with the question, but it's a matter of the harm. Like, is that you you're th- saying that's harm that's still too harmful. But all right, here we go. It oh, be there we got it. We got a. I, I heard that bell. That was nice. <laughs> all right, I heard a bell. I'm moving on. <laughs> Josh's question. <laughs> Josh's question for Ryan. Ryan, can we at least agree that men and women are biologically different, and men generally retain an athletic advantage over women? I feel like we kind of hammered yeah, this we, a little bit. We did. I, I, I probably should have done led with this. Just so we had a baseline. Right. Men are better at athletics than women. Yes. Well, okay. You got to nuance that. Generally, so you'd have to generally. say on average, if we average it over, or you know what even I meant. better, even better, if we take the elite men and the elite women, then yes, there's going to be a difference. Okay. I will totally concede that because empirically, that's demonstrable. Like it, it's been demonstrated. Okay. So you knew what I, I meant. A citation. You just had to yes. put in Tom, five minutes. Of Tom gave us the bell. Tom yeah. gave us the bell. Okay, but <laughs> yay! Well, then I'm moving on. <laughs> All yeah. right, move on. I won't belabor that. There's yeah. some more to that, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, if, if there's anything you want to add, add it. But like... Well, so, so the, the statistics I found, um, selected physical differences between untrained, moderately trained males and females. So these are people that aren't even the, the high-level athletes. Right. And, and there's, a whole, there's a whole slew of things, lean body mass, body fat, grip strength, sure. mm-hmm. cardiac output. But for the most part, I mean, men are way higher, like 80% higher on some of these. But for, for the most part, it was about 30%. That's very significant. Okay. So the one You're that I... A 30% athletic advantage. Yeah. 30% yeah. So athletic. the one that I looked at actually compared uh, Olympic athletes from okay, 1984. Different comparison. Those are right, elite but athletes. Yes. So elite athletes. And it was basically comparing the records, right? So you've got, mm. I don't know, marathon times or in the 100 meter dash or whatever it is. Uh, and it varied, you know, a little bit here and there. But on average, men were performing 10% better. The, the most elite athletes were performing 10% better than women. And That's it varies by sports, That's right? That's interesting. But I, why I really like that article is they went back and tracked that from 1984 all the way up until I think it was 2018 when it was uh, published. And... That gap remained consistent, even though both, right? So both men and women were improving over that time. So the 100 meter dash had gotten, you know, faster and marathon times had gotten faster, but both had gotten faster, Mm -hmm. but they still maintained about a 10% difference. So, I mean, it's, it's hard to argue with the empirical data that there are differences, even at the elite level, highly trained individuals, there's about a 10% difference. Totally concede that point. I appreciate both of you distinguishing your those statistics right because i hate it when we're like no 20 no you know 10 and it's like (laughs) that's we never are like well what were we quoting and so like yeah (laughs) those are different things right but yes i mean but they both point that yeah there is an an empirical advantage yeah Uh, okay okay. all right good i'm gonna move on uh josh can we agree that subjecting young people really any people to a forced genital exam is unethical and, you have to agree with this one. Come um, on. <laughs> and that does support the Renee Richards. Um, uh, so they they had, when she was initially disqualified, they uh, invited her to take a, basically it was like this, this um, can't remember what it's called here, but it was some kind of exam to determine her gender and she refused to do it. And, right. uh, and, and yeah, I'm trying to see if it's in my notes, but yeah. All right, so was, just to, to give a little bit of background, uh, you mentioned, I think it was Mississippi that passed this. They might have passed it before Florida, but here in the state of Florida, basically, you know, they passed this uh, measure uh, saying that trans women can't compete in, in high school sports and college, you know, competitive sports. Um, here's the deal. 
That includes this uh, kind of idea that if you think someone is lying about their gender, you can accuse them. Okay. So the testing to determine whether or not someone is transgender or cisgender that has been proposed is pretty invasive. Drop your pants, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> both of you, both of you have daughters who play sports. If someone accused one of your daughters of lying about their sex and the league authorities required your daughter to get an exam, would you allow your daughters to be subjected to genital exams and or genetic testing? Can we agree that subjecting young people, really any people, to a forced genital exam is unethical? Because that is the criteria that was laid out in the state of Florida. If you think they're lying, they have to be willing to be subjected to a genital exam in order to continue to play. Would you let your daughters do that? Like, uh, has the, was there proposed alternatives? No. The, you have two options. A genetic test, and genetic tests can be weird, right? Because you can have certain chromosomes but have different hormones, and those don't line up, and we know that that can be the case, right? Mm -hmm. Or you get a, a, a genital exam where they go in and probe and they poke and they look around for stuff to see what is going on. Would you let your daughters be, you know, have to have a, gen, a, a genital exam in order to continue to play? Because some, somebody said, I don't, I don't buy your sex. It's an interesting question. It really is. Um, I mean, I would obviously, I'd, I'd be okay with the genetic test. Um, but let me let me flip it on its head and let's discuss this. Should found a found fox before she broke that woman's skull? Should she have been submitted to this test? If somebody said, I don't know, this might be a dude. Um, it would have prevented that girl from getting her her skull smashed, right? So I, I understand your point. This is kind of murky waters here. If if somebody, I mean, there's there's a, a a movie where some dude get knocked out of the NBA because he's doing marijuana or something and, and he dresses up like a woman and he goes and dominates the WNBA. Right. And it's not, and I mean, it's, it's a silly movie, um, but it's maybe, terrible. maybe he should have been submitted to a, a test. Maybe he should have dropped his trousers at some point because uh, he's dominating the NBA or the WNBA. And that that's a problem. Okay. Well, this, so this brings up an interesting thing because you have, okay, so you remember, um, you guys remember the uh, a guy, Jeremy Bowles that we grew up with, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big kid. And he, uh, really big kid for his age group. And he got called out several times on the soccer team for that they thought he was too old, right? Yeah. And he actually oh, had yeah. to carry a birth certificate with him to be, uh, because he got asked enough times that he'd be like, had to show people, prove that he was the, the yeah, appropriate age matt, it, matt and i had a guy on our team brett entertained the same thing he was a foot taller than everybody forever so yeah yeah I but this exact same argument right of like you're this isn't fair you're competing you have an unfair advantage is what they're accusing him of and then mm -hmm. he actually to the point that he had to carry proof right and so this is that's what is that's what we're getting to right where you have to prove that you you don't have an unfair advantage and what are the terms of that you know and, and i so like that's that's an interesting question like so i'm thinking about that question right and like hopefully it wouldn't be like okay you got to do it right now and who's who's the <laughs> judge here uh the you know the opposing team coach the, this something. creepy guy over here with the dark <laughs> shades <laughs> uh, sure he's over there, there going yes a, a good safe uh uh process for this but uh it, it's it, it is interesting right because it's the exact same argument as the birth as it the is birth certificate um, uh, it's a bit more invasive than a birth certificate. Come on, well, let's be I, fair. I, no, it, it's totally more invasive. I'm saying it's the yeah. same argument. It's the same. It's same-ish same argument. argument, but it's way more invasive. They're basically yeah. saying you got to get a genital exam to compete. Yeah, but the heart uh, of it I'll, is it's about fairness, right? Sure, yeah. it's about fairness. I get Proving that. that it's fair. Yeah, I'll give you half agreement because yeah, I don't know that I would agree for my daughter for the the genital exam, but I'd be okay with any other kind of verification. If they could do the um, a genetic test, the genetic test, or Tom, do you have that? a half bell, half buzzer, <laughs> half one, or hit them at the same time? <laughs> well, you, you do raise a good point, but, I mean, but that, again, that's literally how they laid it out in the law here. When they pass the law, they're like anybody can weird. accuse anybody. So I could be playing any sport, right, and yeah. just be like, "Hey, nope, I think you're a liar," <laughs> and I can pick anybody. I think this right. whole team is a bunch of guys. <laughs> exactly. The, examined. the dude yeah, with the hat trick, definitely a girl. Get him out of here. Right. Right. 
Yeah, no, so, I, you raise a good point. But again, it's a murky line. Where, where, how do we ensure fairness then? Uh, and we should because that's what sports is about. If, if all of a sudden we have these, uh, you know, these Russian uh, ladies on <laughs> testosterone with beards showing up wanting to play against my daughter, there's not a lot of fairness there. Uh, you know, and they've done that with the Olympics where the Russian team showed up and they were all juiced to the gills, right? We want fairness in our athletics, but you do raise a good point. I'll give you half agreement. All right. Okay, good. All right. Uh, final question. Ryan, can we agree that if men can actually transition into women and women can actually transition into men, biological women would be finding the same success in men's sports as biological women are finding in women's sports? Okay, that's a horribly worded question, but hmm. ho hopefully you understand it. Um, there are. Oh, I think women, I see what you're saying. There okay. are trans women that are finding some success. Hubbard is finding some success. Um, some of these some. people are. Yeah, well, like you said at the beginning, these are it's still a very tiny group of athletes. Yep. If we if we give them widespread acceptance. I mean, if we try your 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 uh, test, your trial mm -hmm. that you posited at the very beginning, whatever we saw, we would probably find that that, that uh, they're dominating a lot of these sports. Because immediately, as soon as we said, "Yeah, do it," we have Hubbard, Laurel Hubbard, and some of these people that are already right at the top. Yeah, and we don't I, see. Uh, I would say I I think that we're going to see a lot more of this. I think it's just barely that these these yeah. rules are changing, and that actually, I think we're going to see a lot more in the future. This is just kind of the tip of the iceberg. But, yeah, and, and and here let me let me pause the argument here. How come we haven't seen a single uh, biological woman that has transitioned to a man? do well in any men's league no we don't have any women knocking off olympic spots or or competing in any uh meaningful men's league in the nba nfl none of that we haven't seen a single trans man um find any success do you understand what i'm saying uh kind of so do you, you understand know, what i'm, I'm saying yes but you know i'm the king of nuance right so let, let me give two different hypotheticals and I will probably agree with one, but not the other. Okay. Right. So to your point, we don't have anybody who say transitioned at 30 uh, from a woman to a man and then started to dominate the NFL. Right. We, we don't know of any known cases of that. Do we know? Cause uh, we finally have one openly gay NFL player. One as of uh, 2021. There's, really there's one more, openly think. gay. No, well, one a active, it was active. active. Yeah. Oh, active, active okay. openly gay NFL player. There is one. Okay. Um, do we know how many current NFL players transitioned at eight or nine? Yeah. And that's, we're that's on hormone point, right? therapy. Like, like they're going to admit to, they're not going to admit that. Hey, there's absolutely no, the we, out of me. Yeah. we have no idea how many are actually out there competing right now. And they could be, totally no. dominating because they were on testosterone treatment and that's totally legal because they're allowed to be on that when they transition from women to men. So they could be getting testosterone, some other hormones and effectively juicing. They're not juicing. They're just changing their hormonal balance, right? They transition sexually. So they get the transition uh, surgery I've and they could totally be dominating. And we I, have no idea. I've actually seen some um, athletes say that could be a big problem and it might be a big problem because we don't let people that are on uh, testosterone compete with the men because they're juicing. And so this could be a big problem. And, but we don't know that, do we? And I, I see what you're so, saying, but... So on the first one, the first hypothetical, I would agree, we don't have any evidence of that, right? We now have one case of a trans woman who seems to be competing, right? Laurel Hubbard. One case, as That's far as true. I know, at the Olympics, at the Olympics, at the Olympics. Olympics. Okay, at the you Olympics. gave the other example of somebody in the MMA. Got it. Um, MMA. We, there's, there's some uh, track and field people. Uh, it's it's happening. It's in its uh, infancy, but it's happening. Okay, but we don't see any of the other. But it's because no one would come out and, and say it. Well, I mean, honestly, I can you imagine? That. Can you imagine them coming out and saying, "Actually, I was born biologically a woman." Um, how, how, how would their teammates respond, let alone other teams? Imagine it's the NFL. In right? our current climate, I'd, they would probably be celebrated. They would probably be given an award. By Maybe not left. by their teammates, but, but certainly by the left. They would be a champion. By the left, absolutely. 
but what incentive do they have to come out right now? They so be held as so, champions by the left and given all the left courage prizes. Sure, but that's not going to increase I, their I get, salary. I get it's your counter argument, but it it kind of seems you're grasping at straws here. No, I'm adding some nuance you're, when where I think there's definitely you're, nuance you're proposing a hypothetical. I'm asking, there's where's where's the evidence? And you're saying, well, there is none because nobody would want. I mean, I get what you're saying, but do you not see the point that I'm making? The the point is men have an athletic advantage. Well, Women, your, your point is if you're born biologically female, okay, it doesn't matter. And you correct me here. It doesn't matter at what age you transition. You're never going to be as successful no. athletically as a male. Well, or are you agreeing with probably, my nuance? And then point. But, I would but take again, that a step further. That and then the flip of that is that if you're born a male, you're always going to have an advantage of, over women, right? That's. Or are you saying that if you transition really early, that's but we, a different we argument? We don't know. Um, and, but, and this is probably a whole, a whole other thing we should talk about. We shouldn't be transitioning kids. That's abominable in my eyes because kids don't know what sex they are when they're eight. That's insane to let a what, child make those kind of decisions. Well, what gender they are, just to clarify. <sighs> Okay, sure. <laughs> I'm just saying that that's an important but, distinction. But but we, I mean, we haven't seen that. So it, it, maybe it's possible that if you took a a child and started pumping her full of testosterone, she would compete with men. Maybe, but then then you run into that whole other territory. Is it is that fair to men? Because she's been juicing her whole life. You might create some sort of Hulk monster there that Hulk smashes men. We so don't Ryan, know. You don't agree yeah. because there is no evidence. Is that? I mean, I, I, it's partial agreement. I'll give Josh another partial agreement, right? So uh, on on his give me, point, give me ten of, seconds to clarify the question. Okay. Okay. We we don't we don't have the science right now to take a woman and make her one hundred percent a man, and vice versa. We we can pump them full of testosterone. We can do surgeries and kind of make it look like it, but it's not good enough. We don't have. You can't take a man, especially one that transitions after puberty, and turn him into a woman. That's my point. It okay, doesn't but, work. But Our science there, isn't there yet. Sure. The key is transition well after puberty. And I would say if you started at day one, I don't know how big of a difference there really would be, to be honest, because the well, I mean, it's a, it's a hormonal thing, right? Uh, that's why they give it's hormone not, treatments. But it's not just hormones. It's the, not just hormones. I, I'm with my second with question, when I said men and women are biologically different, there's something like, I, th I think the study I saw said there's like 6,000 differences. There's a, there's a lot of differences. It's not just hormones. Okay. But again, that's Women on have average. wider hips. But that's all on average, right? Okay. But that's They're, what we're talking about is averages. We're not talking about the outliers. Women are built differently than men. And it's not just hormones. Hormones dictate a lot of it, bone mass and muscle mass. But sure. but not bone structure and uh, there's a, there's a whole slew of things. So let's go yeah, back but they're the... yes, but they would both be like normal curves, right? And if you overlap those normal curves, they're going to hit certain spots, and they're not even necessarily outliers. I mean, there are many many women who are far more physically fit and could beat the crap out of me and any one of us, right? And we just can concede that, like that's absolutely true. They're better fit. When Tom and I climbed Mount Hood, do you remember this, Tom? When we climbed Mount Hood, that one woman who did this on like a daily basis. And yeah. we had been, you know, we'd been training and we we're like, well, ready to do this. And we, we thought we did pretty well. She comes up with her dog and two ice axes and doesn't even have a safety rope. Right. It's just like, boop, 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 boop. That was my morning work? jog. Was and then ran back down the mountain. No, her dog ran up the mountain too. It wow, totally, it, it diminished the success of our <laughs> climbing Mount Hood by like a massive factor, not because it was a woman, but because the dog ran up in little booties and she did this as her morning jog. That's so, funny. yeah, I mean, but she's an outlier. She's I an outlier. I pushed her down the hill if I had a <laughs> uh, All right. So, so this is interesting. I think um, moderator uh, conclusion here. I, yeah. I, I do think uh, I, I agree with the point that Ryan is making in that this will be an issue in the future if if trans women continue to win. If, if Hubbard dominates the Olympics, this is going to be a big issue. If uh, if 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 it's if she fizzles out and and most other athletes fizzle out, then I don't think it'll be a big thing. I mean, it, it has played out in the high school sports. So um uh, so it's uh, it's uh, that, and that's probably what's prompted some of these lawsuits from the or from these some of these bills from the um, 
uh, from the states. But I'm it's it's interesting where we're gonna settle. I because I'm wondering if you're gonna have, uh, you know, we're gonna because like that invasive d- genital thing. Yeah, no one's gonna like that. But I what we're probably this is gonna be weird. But we're probably gonna settle on some kind of set format of like of a, a, a certificate, a gender certificate, right? Of like. I'm this based on your state criteria for identifying gender. I meet, I'm a woman being, you know, I meet this criteria. It's a, it's a weird idea. Right. But it, that it seems like that's kind of where we're going to end up. But anyway, who knows? Who knows though? But interesting stuff. Yeah. Uh, can I throw in my, my big yeah. final point? Oh, you yeah, have another yeah. fourth yeah. point. I don't have a fourth point. This give is me, not a fourth point. This is my your, summary uh, statement. Final conclusion. Yeah my summary statement. So my, my overall point is that these laws that are being passed are nothing more than a moral panic. And that's a technical term that we use in sociology, but I'm going to give you a specific example, just like the satanic ritual abuse panic from the 1980s and 1990s and the gay marriage moral panic of the early 2000s. That satanic ritual abuse panic, you know how many cases of satanic ritual abuse were actually eventually documented? Zero. Never happened. Uh, It was a moral panic, meaning people freaked out over nothing. Uh, Gay marriage has been legal in all U.S. states since 2015. Has the institution of marriage been destroyed? And I asked that very specifically because this was the argument of those who opposed it, and it's summarized in the actual Supreme Court decision. Quote, respondents' argument that allowing same-sex couples to wed will harm marriage as an institution rests on a counterintuitive view of opposite sex couples' decisions about marriage and parenthood. That's directly from the Obergefell versus Hodges decision from the Supreme Court. The argument opposing same-sex marriage was that it would destroy marriage, and it didn't. This is a moral panic. A similar moral panic rose up over letting trans women use women's bathrooms. You know how many cases there are of trans women attacking cis women in bathrooms? Zero. You know how many trans women have been attacked and beaten? For using women's restrooms, I could find three cases in my cursory examination yesterday when I was looking this up. People feel that their moral worldview is being threatened, so they are lashing out at a vulnerable population, and I think it's pretty sick. Um, These people are not harmful, and if they occasionally win in some competition, occasionally, eh, what's the big deal? Who's harmed by that? I don't think anybody's harmed by that. But marginalizing them even more than they are already marginalized, I think is really damaging. I think this is a moral panic. Awesome. Thanks, Ryan. Josh, do you have uh, a closing statement? I mean, a lot of people are going to hate me for the stance I took on this, and I'll, I'll take that. I, I'm not unsympathetic to the plight of marginalized groups, uh, and trans people are right in that group. They are a marginalized group. I, I have no problem admitting that. I'm not unsympathetic to their plight. But we're, we're making a lot of crazy assumptions and and the left is pushing this so hard you know back to that video i showed at the beginning let's not pretend that men and women are not different okay that that's part of the problem men and women are different there are differences we should celebrate those differences and we shouldn't just be self-deluded and and bullied into accepting um when when a man wants to go beat up a woman, you know, in the case of Fallon Fox, that's a problem. And I understand it's not super widespread, but if we just blatantly accept it, maybe this is a moral panic, but if we if we openly accept it, maybe it does become more widespread. And and maybe, you know, my daughter who has been training really hard for several years now to be a good ball player, suddenly she's beat out on a spot for a team by a by a boy that transitions after he hits puberty or something. Okay, it, it may not happen a lot, but it's sure going to affect her. It's sure going to affect the people that are affected. It affects the, the people that don't make the Olympic team because they're beat out by a bio- biological man who's transitioned. Let's not pretend there aren't differences. I understand we need, we need to figure out how to help trans people and, and so they're not so marginalized. This is kind of a complicated issue, but, but let's not pretend and just put our heads in the sand and pretend that there's not an issue, that there's not differences between men and women. There are, and this can lead to problems. And it, uh, it, and it, Ryan does make a good point there. Maybe it is overblown. We don't know that yet, but we already have seen cases of of trans people winning, uh, trans trans women winning. We don't see any trans men winning. So there is a biological difference. 
Awesome. Thanks. All right. I'll wrap this up. So th thanks guys for the fun debate. And uh, can we'll I add something before you stop? Uh, oh, Sorry, <laughs> you had a second I do. Thought. I'm congratulating Ryan here. I came into this one going, there's no way I'm budging on anything. Cause this is such a, so obvious. He made some good points. Good job. Uh, you, you got me thinking about some stuff. That's the whole point of this. Yeah. I don't know how much I moved because I still think it's pretty crazy that dudes are trying to breastfeed, <laughs> but good job. I, I think, <laughs> I think we accomplished what we were trying to accomplish. Hopefully people are thinking. Yeah. Good job. People Absolutely. A little bit and thought and, and reconsidered some of their positions. So that's, that's the point of the whole thing. So Good, uh, good job, guys, uh, on the debate. And uh, we'll join everyone else on another episode of Finding Common Battlegrounds. Till then. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Finding Common Battlegrounds. The music is by Ben Sound. The views expressed in this podcast are those of the participants and not those of their employers. For more information or more episodes, you can find us at FindingCommonBattlegrounds.com. Okay, do you actually want me to stop recording or Tom, are you going to like keep going and like <laughs> give us some really insightful thoughts here over the next five minutes or are we going to just like, are we no, done? I, I don't know. I guess the, the only thing I was you know thinking about is you want, it's the same thing that we did for women, right? We wanted women, women were marginalized. So we created a whole category of women's sports so that right. they could compete. And now it's like, well, we would like to include trans, but it's going to come at the cost of women, of women's winning. And, and, and Ryan, you're saying that's a small price to pay. And, and Josh is saying that's, that's not fair to them. Right. And they're already yeah. a marginalized group. We're marginal, you know, we're marginalizing an already marginalized group. And like where, do I uh, do you create a trans sport right league and it's a, it's its own thing right and 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 that creates you know well is that fair and who knows right it's well there'll be claims of marginalization there but that actually it makes sense to me I get the problems with it and I almost brought it up but that one was what makes sense to me if they want to compete let them compete with each other but there would be like three people out there competing because there's not Honestly, a lot of that's problem. This, and here's what I'll say. It's the same thing as gay marriage, right? We'll be like, Hey, you had commonwealth, uh, whatever it was, common law marriages, common or, law marriages. Yeah. And they're like, well, we want, we want what you have, right? We same sex. That's civil what, unions that's that's what trans thing. would say. Yeah. They're like, no, we want to compete in the sports that you're competing in. And yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a respect thing. Right. And that's, uh, and that's what they're wanting, right? That's what they, they're feeling marginalized. And they're like, don't give me my own little thing. I want to be respected and play along with everybody else. We're like, well, where do we put you? Right. That's the argument. Where do we put you? And that's, uh, it, it, it feels like it's hurt. It, 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 to, to, it's hard to give them justice, right. And everybody justice. So that's, that's a hard argument. Yeah. I, I, I think that's actually fair to say. And I, I like the way that you frame that women have been marginalized for, I mean, they're still marginalized. I, we, we can't claim equality at this point, but um, to then say, okay, we're going to introduce this other group and they're going to compete with women. That does complicate it. I think that's fair. I think that's a fair point. It's a good point. So cool. All right. Okay. Any other cool insights, Tom, before I stop the recording? Cause you do this to us every time. I know. No, his summary just there was better than anything either of us said. <laughs> and we almost stopped recording. His summary was perfect. <laughs> All right. Does it every time. All I right. know. I'm going to stop. And then we're, we're not talking about this anymore. We'll talk about other stuff. Okay. <laughs> there.